lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. How are you? Pretty good. I haven't actually heard you coughing. What happened? My, I, I keep telling people my cough has went pretty well went away, but they don't believe me when I tell them that. <laughs> yeah? So it's still there. It happens every now and then, but it's nowhere near as bad. I'm like, I'm on the mend. Yeah, I, I was just realizing that I don't think that I've heard you cough since you got here, and that's... I think I have, but it's it's not it's not as bad. It's I don't definitely, know that that's ever happened. All right. <laughs> no, it's definitely... I'm on the mend, man. Well, good. So, good. yeah. Um, I, I think that I have been not treated long enough that I actually do have a real ear infection now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, ha- I think I may have an ear infection too, which brings me to a point. We're definitely like a, def- a couple of old men now. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a different ailment every week. Yeah. Happy fortieth. <laughs> yes, so I'm, I'm now <laughs> over the hill, as they say. Yeah, definitely join so, the ranks of the old men. I am I'm officially an old man. So I've been there for a while. It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, it's fine. I've embraced it. Lean in, man. That's what I say. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know that an ear infection... Ear infection is usually a kid thing, isn't it, though? Like, I wouldn't yeah. associate that with an with old man, man thing. Problems. Yeah, it's definitely, like, just an ailment, though. Like, Yeah, <laughs> the, the old man stuff is like, man, I ache all over. Yeah. Like, that's the old man stuff. Oh, I gotta stand up because my back hurts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all right, pause the podcast. We gotta, <laughs> gotta stand up a minute. Yeah, exactly. Uh, move around. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... Yeah, well, uh, I, you know, I am probably in better shape now than I was, like... Six years ago? Ten years ago? Definitely, definitely better than ten years ago, I think. You think so? Yeah. 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 Maybe not. I mean, um, you, you eight eight years ago? I was going to say, there was, I, I don't know when, but there was a time where you, like, made it a point to start focusing on that. Yeah. Uh, and I remember that time. I don't remember when it was. I don't remember either. But I, re- I remember the transition that you were like, okay, like I got to start taking some control over things. Yeah, because I found that I couldn't stay in shape by sitting on the couch anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and uh, all the active things that I had been doing, you know, like going out and playing basketball with the guys and stuff like that, that just didn't really happen anymore. Yeah. Um, oh, man, it's... just speaking of which, I went and played a little basketball in the yard this mm-hmm. week with the kids. Yeah. yeah, like that's a workout. Well, especially in Alabama where all you got to do is stand outside to be hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> when it's 94 degrees, yeah. playing basketball outside is quite a workout. It's tough, man. Yeah. Um, so uh, it was, I can't remember when it was, but uh, like what year or how old I was at the time or whatever. But um, I know that it was the, uh, the year that we went up to um, Ohio to my brother's uh, – in-laws for thanksgiving oh yeah yeah um because it was like right before that that i decided that i needed to do something different and what i had decided to do different was to change my diet yeah and then suddenly i go up there for their giant thanksgiving (laughs) feast and there's like not a lot that that i could eat anymore (laughs) dietary requirements (laughs) yeah (laughs) um you know this is no grains no sugars all right like no bread none of all this none of this junk like (laughs) it was the worst time to go into that because of course it's the holiday season where all the chocolate comes out and everything i have i have loosened those restrictions uh significantly since then because i did get in shape um I need to tighten them back up. <laughs> it's time to time to re yeah. tighten the reins. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I wasn't. I didn't have much of a sweet tooth before I like really cut it out of my diet, though. Yeah. And and then all of know, a sudden it just, takes over. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I I'm, I continue to exercise and so forth. But I think the the diet needs to. I need to. Um, yeah, I need to tighten up on the diet. Well, I'll tell bit. you, quitting smoking too definitely affected like my sweet tooth. Yeah. Like, not that I hadn't always had one because I like sweets and stuff, mm-hmm. but it intensified when I quit smoking, like noticeably. Yeah. So, for me. That's interesting. Um, yeah. My brother said it happened to him when he quit drinking. 
Oh, yeah. I could see that. Maybe it just fills in for whatever your bad habit was before. <laughs> right? I don't it's know. A, it's a nice replacement habit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, and it's much more socially acceptable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, no dirty looks when you pull out a candy bar. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, people don't uh, mind when you like dump the pixie stick in your mouth when you're cutting out cocaine on the table. Like People <laughs> tend to give you funny looks. Like, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's... That yeah. made me think of another story, but I'm not going to tell that in the podcast. Oh, yeah. um, so uh, one of the <laughs> just a as for awkward transitions. Yeah. Um, one of our listeners uh, sent me an email asking um, asking us to to discuss uh, assisted suicide. Um, in the context of like these things that we've been talking about with abortion and self ownership and yeah. right to life and well, it's definitely a, a topic for because we do believe in self ownership. You own yourself, your body. You can do with it what you wish. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that it, I can see for a lot of people that that would be an interesting question, depending on where you kind of fall on that type of thing. Um, I know for me, you know it. I, I I truly believe in self ownership. So if if you decide that that it's your time to go, I think that's your right. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, and and as far as assisted goes, I mean, I think that that's probably the best way for it to be handled. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I I get that. Yeah. I mean, that's just what I believe. Yeah. Um. I, I agree. Uh. I I think that I don't have an issue with assisted suicide. I think. Um, there's no sense in forcing somebody to continue living when they're miserable. Yeah. Um, well, and, and I, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. And that's, that's actually something I've put some thought into over the years, um, with just different situations I've been through and seen. And I'm not saying that's a route I would absolutely ever take, mm -hmm. but I mean, that is something that that's crossed my mind. Like, I mean, if you're just in so much, and there there are elements that cause us where you're just in pain all the time and you're miserable. Mm-hmm. Like, I would I wouldn't want to carry on with that. Yeah, yeah. The only way that you can get by is by taking so many painkillers. You're completely out of it anyway. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Like I mean, what's I the could... point? And and we are talking about it in a medical context here. Like I yeah. um. <laughs> I guess it's just like it's actually a lot like the abortion thing in that as a general rule I don't personally approve of of suicide i think you know suicide as a especially for i mean my experiences with suicide have all been young healthy people reasonably healthy and just unhappy yeah people well and And it doesn't solve anything i i doubt it solved anything really for them and it sure as hell um, seemed like a Left really awake in the path. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, and I and I'm not advocating. I, I would never in any way advocate for suicide. And even somebody that w- had health elements, like I, w- it's not something I would push them to do or, or no. I would advocate against. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it, but I do believe, like, absolutely, in you know your body, your choice. Like, I mean, you, I mean, I in I, in every way. I just, that's, you should be able to do with your body what you wish. Yeah. You know. Um, You run into uh, religious arguments against against this one also. Yeah. Um, And the, um, I I think that the underlying argument, as I understand it really, um, besides just like the general prohibition on suicide in the Bible, but um, the reasoning is, is that your life doesn't belong to you. Yeah. Right, that your oh, life belongs yeah. to God, and yeah. it's so it's not yours to to choose to end. Yeah. Um, well, and I and I I understand that, and I can sympathize with that, and that's a big part of the reason I would advocate against it mm-hmm. if somebody w- I knew was wanting to choose that path. But I, as a religious person myself, like fairly religious at least, um, I I do try not to force my beliefs onto other people. Yeah. Like I, that, that is something that I, I just, I don't, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about my beliefs and I will, that kind of thing. And I'll try to persuade you, but I've never been one to force something like that onto anybody else. Yeah. And that's, that's religious or libertarian or anything like that. Like the same way with libertarianism, like I'll talk about it with you all day long and try to convince you, but I'm not mm-hmm. going to try to force it on you. Yeah. Like I, I, I like I argue it passionately and 
combatively, I have been told <laughs> recently, um, sometimes, but I'm, and I, I, you know, obviously I do want to convert people to my position, yeah. um, or to make them understand or uh, where, and, th- and you know, that's actually a big change in me, uh, yeah. just to go down this little side, um, this tangent here for a moment that I need to, um, this is another thing that I need to rein in, um, is that, um, is it used to be that I tried to understand the other person's perspective. Like I spent yeah. a lot more time asking questions than making statements yeah. um, when I was discussing that stuff. Of course, that pisses people off too. <laughs> it does. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know. Well, then the reason I find, I've found, at least in my experience, is the reason it makes people mad is because that they're not able to defend their positions as well as they think they can. Yeah. In a lot of cases, and that's not mm-hmm. across the board, but it, it, that's what I find is what, because I, I do, I've been known to do the same type thing where I'll just ask questions, ask questions, because mm-hmm. I want to understand. Like, mm-hmm. I want to know where you're coming from, because, and I'm naturally that way. I'm naturally an empathetic person. Like, I want to understand as much as I can. So, when you, but a lot of times when you're talking about these type issues with somebody and you start asking a bunch of questions, mm-hmm. somewhere down the line, they realize that. Maybe they, they can't answer it. Well, they they either can't answer it or they don't understand why they believe what they things like mm-hmm. that, you know, and that puts people off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to know where to draw the line, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but uh, in you know, in parallel with the abortion question, I think that this is um, not a, a question for the state to decide. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, this is a again a question between. You and your family and your doctor yeah. and your priest, I suppose, if... Yeah. Well, it's uh, to me, it's a qu- just like to the same token what you're saying. I mean, it's something you discuss with the people you're close to, mm-hmm. to, to make that decision. And I do think for you to make that decision without including those people would be very selfish. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, if you just like decided one day you were just going to go have this done and poof out of the blue... Yeah, like, I mean, that would be a very selfish thing to do. Yeah, that was actually the word that I was looking for earlier when I was talking about my experience with um, with suicide yeah. um, from friends is that I, in the aftermath, I felt that it was very selfish of them. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I, I, I absolutely agree with that. It's it's just, you it, you know, you're looking for a way out and, it, and just leaving a wake behind you, you know. Yeah. So. What about the rest of us? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, so then, uh, the, you know, the next question is like, how do you, I mean, there are tests for this, but, um, I guess the concern, uh, would be that someone made this decision, um, without maybe having the real mental capacity to understand the decision that they're making. Yeah. Um, and like you run into some, some concerns there, uh, particularly where families involved. Um, there are a lot of families that aren't like your family and my family that yeah. everybody likes each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, where, uh, you know, there, there are real, you know, where there's some real selfishness there too. Yeah. Um, where I can, I, you know, I can imagine a situation where somebody is trying to convince an older family member to yeah. make the decision to yeah. end their life yeah. to get to the next, you know, to get to the inheritance or whatever. Yeah, it happens whatever. To be. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so, you know, there are concerns about, um, the, you know, the mental acuity of the person who's making the decision. Yeah. And that's it, just like you say. So I, that's where I'm in the same boat. Like I definitely like, obviously somebody who's, not mentally stable doesn't need to be making those type of decisions. Yeah. I mean, like, would you trust Joe Biden to make a decision like that right now? (laughs) Yeah, probably not. (laughs) (laughs) So that's a, that's a good example. Actually, he can run the country all day long, but I don't know if he needs to be making decisions about, (laughs) um, and then, uh, of course, you know, the, Hmm. Um, I guess as for right now, like, well, well, the position that I, I feel like both of us are taking here is that the government shouldn't be involved, yeah. um, one way or the other. Uh, 
right now, I think that there's a national prohibition. I don't I'm know. Pretty sure there is. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I'm not a hundred percent. There might be some. There, there may be some states. I'm. I'll be truthful with you. I don't know. Um, I don't think that there are though, because it seems like whenever something like this comes up, it's a huge deal issue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Our doctors heard, are being this held came accountable. Up in the news simply. this week. Something I saw, and I don't remember all the details from it, but it was, but it had happened in Canada, and mm-hmm. it was actually somebody with, um, they had like severe long COVID symptoms or something of okay. that nature, and they just they had they've been sick for like a year. And had like, they been vaccinated? I, you know, I'm not. They, I don't know that they mentioned in the thing. Oh, okay. Um, but just curious. But it was. And I forget specifically what the, but it was like headaches. It was, it was, but it was supposed to be super severe. Mm-hmm. And um, this person at least had wanted to do an assisted suicide, but I guess they couldn't. Um, okay. I don't remember the details, but, but it's been in the news this week. Yeah. Um, I wonder, so I didn't see that. I wonder if that's why it came up. It, it could be. Um, from the listener. But um, yeah, I, cause, but this was all in Canada, and I don't. I, I'm assuming you can't do that in Canada either. Mm. But I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, all that to say, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that it's probably generally not permitted in um, Western cultures, just because of the uh, the, the Christian base. Yeah. 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 Um, but um, I didn't go. I didn't go hunting around for the the laws before discussing this. Uh, yeah. We were going to talk about it on a philosophical level, which is <laughs> that, yeah, uh, your body, your choice, um, yeah. your life belongs to you to dispense with as you please. Yeah. Um, and then the hope would be that you did include the people around you yeah. <laughs> in yeah. this decision. But, but once but, again, it's your, your choice. Mm-hmm. Like I say, I mean, it's, that, that's still, you know, you, How about, you, you um, have ownership over your body and your, the decisions you make. You yeah. Know? How about for living wills? Like, um, saying that if, uh, if this situation presents itself, you know, that, uh, I don't know, um, maybe a, uh, preemptive, um, decision for something like dementia or Alzheimer's or yeah. what have you, you know, some kind of serious mental decline, yeah. um, to, uh, to say, you know, if I reach this point where I am clearly not, yeah. yeah um, then I would like assisted suicide as part of, uh, a, you know, a living will. Or I would whatever. say that would be a good idea because I will say, um, I haven't had this so much personally, but I know a lot of people like that is one of the worst things to watch somebody go through mm-hmm. somebody with um dementia or Alzheimer's or something like that where yeah. they just completely every day don't know what's going on. Yeah. It's really hard for the people around yeah. them. Too. Well, it's hard for everybody. Yeah. Like it's, it's a really tough situation. So, I mean, I could see, but always meeting new people. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it was only in such a friend, the, my, the people I've talked to that's dealt with this is the, the, the patient, the person isn't, happy like mm-hmm. it's because they're always confused and they don't know who who people are or what what's going on so they're they're not just like like happy you know what yeah. i mean they're just they're always upset confused and angry Conf- yeah, exactly mm-hmm. so which is it it just sucks and <laughs> yeah um well i'm a big advocate for uh dnr and living will and and yeah. that kind of thing anyway um definitely a smart thing to do yeah it the other thing is it takes it takes the decision away from family members, which may sound like a bad thing, but in a lot of ways it's a good thing because it, it also relieves them of uh, of guilt of making that kind of decision. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, because, because that there's, can be really. There's hard no too. way I could make that decision for a loved one that was that had dementia or something. To I mean, you just I there's no way I could do that. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, I just no. Even if even if I think everybody would be in the better for it. Like yeah. There's, uh, if that's what they wanted, I would have no problem fulfilling their wishes, mm-hmm. but I couldn't make that decision for somebody. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I was, I was in a position to make that decision for my dad, more or less, not assisted suicide, but, yeah. but when take was... him off the ventilator and, and yeah. Yeah. all that stuff. And, um, and it, it was, uh, I don't know, you, you always second guess. Oh, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, but in the end, I, he 
he wasn't really living. Yeah. No. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I think that it, it's based on the same principles as our, our position on abortion, which is um, your life is yours. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, um, and, and at least, and, and that's actually like part of the objection to abortion is with the idea of um, the the uh, fetus's life or the infant's life or the baby's life, however you want to phrase it, yeah. um, belonging to them, not really to the parent. Actually, that makes me think of something too. Um, you know how uh, Dave Smith often refers to the rights of children being um, rights held in escrow yeah. and controlled yeah. by the parents? Controlled by the parents, yeah. Um, f- with that basis of logic and i know he's just trying to simplify he's trying uh, to yeah he's trying uh, to make a point question but yeah um then that does give the right to take the life away from your children up to a certain point right <laughs> like there has to be limitations on these things as well like y- you have to um determine what the most basic and fundamental rights are and, and determine when they belong to the to the minor yeah um and i I would take the position that the the right to life belongs to them from the very very beginning. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> the point he's making is certain rights. Are, oh yeah. No, yeah, and it's true. Like I said, he's. I know that he's using that example to simplify a a, a broader question. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, he's not speaking in cases. Uh, he's not talking about abortion when he uses yeah. that example. Like, <laughs> right. But. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> But that there you go. Yeah. Uh, but that is an example, like brings up the question. Like yeah. there there certainly are some rights that belong to an individual, even if they're not old enough to understand it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think. Um that seems like a weird place to end that, but that's really mm-hmm. all I have yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, on the issue. Um okay, so let's Let's hit the uh, the the economic stuff. Right. Um, so I did some looking into the Sri Lankan crisis. Oh yeah, the their insurrection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and you know they're having they're having a severe economic meltdown. Yeah. Um, the uh, they have they've had fifty percent inflation. Um, yeah. Food costs have risen like eighty percent on average. Wow. Uh, fuel costs or fuel and transportation costs were like up like 125 percent. Well, the the stuff I saw on the news, they really focused on the fuel thing. Um, that was what was talked about the most. And and I mean, they were interviewing people on the streets that were literally in lines waiting to get in line to get fuel. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it was like like you you wait in this line and you get a ticket, and then you go get in another line. To use that ticket, but nobody's getting anything because they don't have nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know, that's certainly uh, part of the issue. I th- like, there's obviously not one cause yeah. um, in this. And and part of it is the same thing that causes inflation every, in every government, which is they were borrowing like crazy. Yeah. Um, Diluting down the money supply. Uh, yeah. Um, but I th- it seems to me that a, uh, a significant part of this... Um, from what I've been reading, and it's it seems to be the part that they're not really talking about that much, um, is that there was, uh, it was a a green movement um. from the president there, the now deposed uh, oh. president there, yeah. um, and there had been a plan to eliminate synthetic fertilizers, and over a period of some number of years, yeah. um, but he decided to just do it, yeah. Yeah, and so um, they banned uh, they banned synthetic fertilizers, um, and it had severe issues on their ability to produce food. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and one of their um, one of their major exports, something like ten percent of their total export value is tea. Oh, okay. um, and they had a uh, like a nearly twenty percent reduction in um tea production yeah. uh they had a 20 percent production in rice which is a, a food staple yeah um and then so they didn't have this big as much of this big export was 
was ended up being a big part of this because they didn't have the the uh, foreign currency coming in to purchase this export crop because they weren't producing enough of it. Yeah. Um, and because they didn't have the foreign currency reserves, they couldn't afford to buy fuel and so, and other imports. Um, yeah. And they had to focus on uh, food imports because of the rice production fall. Um, they could no longer support their own population with what they were growing there yeah. um, in Sri Lanka, which they had been doing for a long time. I mean, like they had yeah. been supporting their population for a long time. Um, and they ended up having to spend, uh, I think something like half a billion dollars, um, to import rice, which is something which was they normally produced. Something they produced. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they had, uh, you know, um, carrot and tomato prices rose, uh, 400%. Oh, um, yeah. like, so it, it ended up being a, 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 a severe sh- food shortage that I think like triggered a lot of this other stuff. It like yeah. created a cascading effect. Well, there's in, in, in any time there's an economic collapse, especially something of the nature you're, you're describing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's always a catalyst. There's always something that kind of triggers all the other chips to fall. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that, that rice production reduction, production reduction, yeah. um, obviously because of supply and demand, yeah. um, the uh, rice costs rose about 50% yeah. as well. And then they had to buy more <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. because they weren't producing it. Um, and this was all in an attempt to try and try and um, go back to organic food production, which is like one of these green goals that, yeah. that comes up everywhere. Oh yeah. Um, and the, you know, because the idea, I guess, is that modern farming methods are really damaging to the environment. And so we need to go back to organic food production and so forth. But the, the problem here. You can't feed everybody that way. Yeah, that's ex- exactly <laughs> yeah, it. The, that's, that, that's, the, that's the issue here. Yeah. Is. Um, modern farming uh, with synthetic fertilizers, which at, at this point aren't really that dangerous to the environment. Like the, yeah. we've kind of if you'll pardon the term, weeded out like the stuff that was like really dangerous to the environment yeah. uh, um, over time, both uh, in pesticides and um, fertilizers. Yeah. Uh, certainly there's still damage yeah. being done by some of the stuff, but it's, it's been far reduced over the, you know, yeah. the, the last that's several the best decades. you can ask for is to, to slowly get to that point. And so the people that, that go off about climate change, the, that's what they don't understand too, as far as especially like with fossil fuels mm-hmm. is with energy production. Energy production in general mm-hmm. is we can't just stop producing energy and go renewable. Mm-hmm. Like it's if it's ever going to happen, it's going to have to be done slowly and through phases. Um, because what will happen if you don't do it that way is people will starve. Yeah, like that's that like there's there's no like middle ground here. Like there's no. We can just stop using them today and everything's going to be okay. Well, and this is something that they want to do hand in hand with going back to organic farming. Yeah. Um, And this is a a case study in what happens when you make a rapid change to organic farming. Because what modern farming allows is for you to produce a lot more um, with fewer inputs and on less land. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, one of the, the arguments that for modern farming as being less destructive yeah. um, of the environment is that it requires a lot less land to produce the same amount of food. Yeah. <laughs> um, and which that is frees up that's win, that win. Yeah. yeah which that's frees up winning. land for, to be natural or whatever, yeah. or, to, or to build houses on. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> or to, you know, use for more productive yeah, means things yeah. Um, like a solar farm for all I care. But yeah. uh, you know, that's, that's exactly well, it is that like there's this kind of ignorance about um like the costs and the trade-offs yeah uh i mean i, I guess a lot of it's bastiat's unseen so they they look at um the you know what they're going to do and they forget about what what they're going to do costs in terms of alternatives yeah and what that means for everybody else yeah well, and I mean, that's, that's where we're at with the gas prices and stuff now. I mean, mm-hmm. Biden is sending all of these signals to the to the oil, country, um, not countries, the industry, mm-hmm. that 
that this is going away. Like we're not going to yeah. do this anymore. Okay. Well, you send those signals. But right to, now, I really want you to invest a lot of money in expanding yeah, your well, production. What? But that's the problem: is yeah. these these the investments are like ten year payoffs. Like they don't just happen. Like mm. they they're the investing they did ten years ago is where we're getting the stuff for now. Right. So why would you invest for ten years ahead of time if the sitting president is telling you? That you won't be here ten years from now. Mm-hmm. Um, so and that's so. I, so I, we had talked a, a few podcasts ago about the profits for um, the the oil companies, mm-hmm. um, and that they were just raking in record profits. And we had questioned on that podcast whether that was true or not. From what I can see, it is true that these these they they are bringing in record profits, and that's the reason why is they're not reinvesting their money into to production and whatnot, yeah, which is also part of the reason that the prices are going up mm-hmm. is because the prices are going up because they're not investing in, in new prospects. Yeah. Because why so would you? So the supply you? is remaining the same. So the supply is remaining the same. Actually, um, it's being reduced by other interventions by the government. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, you can always blame the government, but you can particularly blame them here because they're, fi- they're, they're fighting this industry from every angle. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's causing the problems we're seeing now. Yeah, and obviously the answer is more government intervention. Well, yeah, and that's I mean Biden will get up there and tell you that with a straight face. I know. <laughs> like I mean, it, but it ain't just Biden. I use Biden because he's the sitting president. But all of these politicians do that. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're all up there proclaiming that government can fix this problem that they've created and made what it is now. Yeah. Buddha judge. What's the energy secretary's name? Um, um, that girl. Oh, I don't know her. Buddha judge is transportation. Right. Yeah. Um, I can't think of her name, uh, the energy secretary, but, um, yeah, they, it's, this is a real like fundamental, uh, ignorance about basic economics. Yeah. Um, it, it's the Thomas Sowell thing through and through. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the first rule of economics is scarcity. There's never enough, uh, enough of anything to supply all the demand. Yeah. Um, and the first rule of politics is to ignore the first rule of economics. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so uh, uh, at the end, uh, well, about a month ago, I guess, uh, John Oliver did a thing on his program um, about... Uh, rent prices, yeah. that rent prices were so high and that this was such a problem and that, you know, we needed to do, the government needs to step in and fix this problem. Yeah. So this, you here know, we go. Yeah. <laughs> Get ready um, for rent to really go up. <laughs> so uh, like the thing that he was pushing at the time, um, was, uh, increased subsidies for, uh, housing vouchers or the section eight housing vouchers, right? Yeah. Um, which says that you, it's like you spend some percentage of your income, on housing and then the government covers the rest uh, or so some, how it works. something like that. I, I'm, okay. I, I don't know exactly. I, I want to say that they, they're supposed to spend like 30% of their income and then the government will pay the difference, um, yeah. to, oh. to house them. But, um, you know, this, this goes into that. Okay. So to draw, um, a parallel, this is like those huge, uh, government loans for college. Ah, okay. All right. yeah. So um, part of the reason that actually almost the exclusive reason, but a big part of the reason that um, the prices of tuition have gone so far up is because uh, the government has been um, supplying more and more money to these uh, these um, school loans. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, <laughs> the answer from any institution is to never have a tuition that's less than what that loan amount would be. Yeah. Um, and you would run into the same problem with his idea of increasing these housing vouchers. Yeah. Like anybody that would rent to uh, rent out Section 8 housing um, is going to increase their rent to whatever that voucher is. Absolutely. Like there's no because, reason to charge because, any less yeah, than that. Because that's free money to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, of course, that just pushes prices up for everybody else yeah. who's, who's not on 
um, getting the subsidy. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, there's so many other things. It, it comes back to a supply <laughs> issue again, just like the food problem in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Um, you, you know, government intervention uh, created a, a, a cascade of problems that reduced the supply of the thing that you need. And therefore, the prices went up, which created more problems and demanded more government intervention. <laughs> and it's the same thing with these rental price increases. Now, part of it is that, you know, like, people have been moving. So it's been driving rental prices up all over the place. Yeah. But a big part of that is that people haven't been investing like the, um, the oil companies yeah. haven't been investing in creating new properties for, for people, people to, to live. live. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the reason is because, and it's in the places that most need them, like the yeah. big cities, yeah. um, because these governments have tried to intervene because of course somebody sits there and they say, you know, like, okay, um, Imagine you're living in, uh, imagine you're living in Dayton, Ohio. All right. And you get this great job in Chicago. Yeah. All right. And it's, you know, a significant increase in money and it's like, uh, got a lot more opportunities for the future and so forth. It's, it, great deal. You like, need to go to Chicago. You need to go to Chicago. Well, yeah. then you start looking at the difference in your housing costs between Dayton and Chicago. Yeah. Um, and all you realize sudden, that suddenly that big uh, pay increase doesn't make any difference at all yeah. because your rent is going to be so much more that it's that it's not worth it. Exactly. All right. But maybe it is in the long run. You still got to push to do that. But, uh, of course, the, the complaint would be, man, you know, these rent prices are outrageous. Somebody should do something about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's to, to the politicians sitting in Chicago. He's going... Well, yeah, these rent cr prices are out of control. We need to do something so more people will move here. Yeah, and he's also saying, well, it's just these greedy landlords. That's the reason that oh, the rent yeah, prices are high. Yeah. Um, and the the truth is that zoning laws that, that restrict where you can place housing, yeah. um, that uh, just like the bureaucratic red tape that you have to go through to get approved for any kind of new big housing project anyway, yeah. um, like all of these bureaucratic burdens increase the cost of setting the play, uh, you know, setting up new housing. Yeah. And these have to be calculated in by somebody who is potentially, you know, going to build these things um, to determine whether and how long it will take for them to recoup the cost of putting it in there in the first place. Yeah. Um, and so this all drives prices up. Oh yeah. And then uh, rent controls is the absolute worst thing. Yeah. Um, and the, of course the rent control is the government telling you you can only charge X amount. Yeah. This is this is the market value for what you're uh, putting on the market. Yeah. You know, like, but it's not. <laughs> all right. Uh, like I can't make a profit this way. And yeah. so you end up with the with these terrible slums. Um, you end up with uh, buildings in disrepair because. What's the point? Yeah. Why would why would I invest in the property? And that's that brings up a good point. Why would you invest in the property to bring up the value of it if you're not going to be able to charge more for the higher value? Right. Like what what sense would that make? What right. what person that owns a piece of property would would invest in their property the a rental property if it's if they they can only make this much off of it mm -hmm. bottom line. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make any sense. You would never do that. Yeah, why spend more than you can make? Exactly, exactly. Because uh, regardless of what you may or may not believe, people who rent aren't doing it out of just the goodness of their heart. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're they're doing it with a, with a profit motive mm -hmm. in one way or another. And maybe the profit motive is just to keep the property. <laughs> yeah. Because... I mean, I, that's why I, I was going to my condo. I, I'm sitting across with somebody that's done that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you want to keep the property. You're not going to live in it anymore. That's the that's the the common sense thing to do. Yeah, rent it and out. I can't get the value out of selling it at that time. Was yeah. the issue? Yeah. And then I did get the value out of selling it, so I did. Yeah. Because renting is a pain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, so you also end up with people just like abandoning properties. Yeah. Well, and I've heard of that type of thing happening in New York, particularly mm -hmm. where like they just wipe their hands of it yeah like just leave it yeah <laughs> <laughs> which yeah i know that i mean because when i've heard about that i've like that just seems crazy to me mm -hmm. but when you get in a situation particularly with the government with things like price controls yeah. dude sometimes you're just left with no other option yeah and they're setting a whole bunch of requirements of what you have to do to keep up the property and you can't afford to do it and yeah like <laughs> you know what do you do you and, take it <laughs> and uh 
most landlords, uh, as I understand it from the st- statistics, most landlords are just like Every small. Day. Yeah. They've got a couple of properties and it's, you know, they're just managing those. They're, yeah. I mean, there are big conglomerates and things like that. But, sure. But that's not, you're right. I don't, I mean, I don't think that's the majority. It doesn't seem like it from what I've seen mm-hmm. because I've known quite a few people in my life that's, you know, had a couple of properties, yeah. you know, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, even like a, a, a building owner yeah. um, in New York or someplace or Chicago or wherever, yeah. uh, a building owner is really like if they own just a single building or maybe two yeah. um, that have, uh, you know, 30 to, to 50 apartments in them, these people are probably like upper middle class. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. like they're probably not... <laughs> Yeah. Like th- these wealthy magnates, like you think, yeah, you know, these aren't Donald cats. Trumps. These are, yeah. you know, people that, um, especially in those kind of places, are probably just getting by. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and, and by the way, everybody that's just getting by right now, just as just kind of a side note for inflation, mm-hmm. like if you're just getting by, it sucks right now. Yeah, because it's not getting better. Like yeah. I mean, the prices of everything is going up. I know we know this. Everybody mm-hmm. that that's bought it this went to the grocery store in the past month mm-hmm. knows this yeah. but just it's worth mentioning like yeah. getting by sucks <laughs> well and um rent controls create a, a distortion in the market because prices are a signal yeah um and so the flip side of that is um increases in rental prices uh you know barring restrictions on where you can build and so forth um is the best thing for the rental market like yeah. you want prices to come down, you want high prices now because yeah. it's a it's a signal to other people that they should get involved in this business yeah. and build properties for people to live in and to rent out to people. Oh, yeah. And as that happens, um, then prices naturally go down. Uh, yeah. You run uh, like the situation that you have now is that it is a um, it is a. R- renter. If I say renter, you can't tell who I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> It, it's a it's a landlord's market. Oh yeah, yeah. Right now, um, the because there's just more people looking for places uh, than there are places to to go. I know there, that's the case here locally, mm-hmm. um, just from the people I talk to and and have dealt with. I mean, it, get, getting a place to rent right now is tough, and when you do get one, it is pricey. Yeah. Some of the prices I'm hearing are just crazy. Yeah, it, it's outrageous. But the good news is because those prices are so high. You're seeing, oh yeah, you're places, seeing properties go up. Places are coming up, like they're mm-hmm. they're building stuff. It which, takes some time, yeah. um, but then those prices will come back down yeah. uh, as it becomes more of a renter's market. Our, our inflation will just take over. Well, those prices will stay the same, but they won't be as bad as they were. We yeah, just, it won't feel as bad. <laughs> it won't feel as bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Funny how that works too. <laughs> yeah, um, but with rent controls, you're you're dissuading people from building more properties. Yeah, if you have restrictions on how much somebody can charge for a property. Um, then if, if they can't see a profit yeah. or they can't see a profit for a long time, yeah. um, then it becomes not worth uh, putting the investment in to well, create and the And when profit. you're dealing with government, you're always dealing with the, okay, this is what, these are the roadblocks they put up mm-hmm. currently. Right. Like, so if, if I'm looking at five to 10 years before I'm going to see a profit, what roadblocks are going to hop up between here and there yeah. that the government's going to put in front of me? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it just dissuades people from, just like you're saying, getting involved in the market. Yeah. Um, the Back to the uh, oil industry um, is a great example of that right now. Yeah. Because while the government is currently like asking for more production yeah. and asking for more I would, investment. I wouldn't even say asking. I think begging is the well, yeah, term sure. I would use. <laughs> <laughs> at least they're not demanding yet. Well, we not will see. yet, yeah. Um, but at the same time, they're giving signals that they're going, they plan to eliminate your industry. Yeah, exactly. So the, the people that have the ability to invest in that kind of infrastructure for the future, they're trying to decide, well, can I get my money out of this? Before they just get rid of it, exactly, and and people and so, the uncertainty create also prevents people from investing. Oh, absolutely! Like in, uncertainty is is one of the biggest um, uh, biggest uh, limitations um, on entrepreneurs making decisions. Which is the reason why, in general, I think that having Democrats in the office, just in general, is bad because. 
they create more uncertainty because you, there's always going to, a Democrat is going to want more legislation and want to control more. Mm -hmm. And that's just a bad thing. And I don't think Republicans are any better than Democrats at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But at least when they're in office, they are deregulating, like, or at least they say they're going to. Well, at least I would say that they're regulating slower. Yeah. Well, and differently, <laughs> like the the stuff they're going to regulate is different, but it, tr mm -hmm. it does at least in, on some level, create some um, certainty as yeah, far as the future. Yeah, a little stability. Stability, mm -hmm. that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, so that's just something to consider, too. So. Um, but in all of these cases, your issue is supply. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and the supply issue can be fixed by the government not meddling. Well, yeah. I mean, you just... You, yeah, let let it go. But the something else I just wanted to mention because we've talked a lot about like fossil fuels and stuff, mm -hmm. and like we were talking, about, maybe we were talking about it earlier. I don't remember now. But um, fossil fuels have done amazing things for people over the years. Like we mm -hmm. wouldn't live in the society we live in now without fossil fuels. Yeah. And like maybe they're not the best for the environment. I'll I'll concede that. Mm -hmm. But things would be far worse without them. Yeah. Well, I um. It was, I don't know, maybe three years ago now, um, I was talking with a friend who is was far left, is far left. Um, and uh, I could not convince him that there have been literally a billion people pulled out of poverty. Yeah. Because of the, the free market. Yeah. Or liberalization of markets. Yeah. And he was like, no, people are poorer now. There's more people in poverty. And I'm like, no, you're wrong. <laughs> the, that's, <laughs> that's a first world perspective. Yes. Is, is, the, is what I would say. Yeah. Is, it's um, not even true here. Yeah. Well, no, it's not true here. But to, <laughs> to, to, to have that, that just so feels like a first world perspective where you don't yeah. understand what else is going on mm -hmm. in the, the larger scheme of things. Yeah. And I told him, I was like, man, you just got to go look this up. Like yeah. there have been a, certainly hundreds numbers, of millions, probably a billion people pulled out of poverty in just India and China yeah. due to a liberalization of their markets. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I, it's indisputable. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, in a lot of, uh, um, you know, future looking, um, sci-fi novels and games and movies and all kinds of things. Yeah. Um, the real credit of the future is energy. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, energy is the limiting factor on, uh, anything that, that can be produced really. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you know, the potential for the, the future of human species and what have you energy is going to is the limitation there's yeah. plenty of energy out there i'm not saying don't go green yeah. i'm saying that you can't eliminate the biggest source of well, energy that you have right now it has to happen over time um and these we, things will improve there is a desire to find other sources of energy yeah the market will bear this out when mm -hmm. these when these things are ready for prime time the market will put them on prime time. Yeah. Um, it, that you don't need the government to step in and force this. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I think that's just And they can't make it happen any faster, really. No, um, regardless of how much money they throw at it. Because mm -hmm. that's that's what, that's the argument I always hear back is, well, you need the government to invest in these things because the, the private industry won't. Yeah, and you know where that money comes from? You. <laughs> you and me. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's taxpayer money. Exactly. Uh, it's just... So if you want these things, you invest. Yeah. Um, and, like and, a... and what I would say is that you just do that naturally anyway. Yeah. Because as the price of solar power drops, you'll put more money into solar power. Exactly. You'll start using it at your house and, mm -hmm. and investing in it to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that that's that's the way this has to occur, but it, it can't be forced. And and I feel like there's there's definitely an agenda being pushed right now to force this mm -hmm. to happen, and that's causing a at least a lot of the problems we're seeing now. And it's going to cause more as time goes along. As the more this agenda is pushed, the worse things are going to get. Yeah. Um. Not to be all doom and gloom, but mm -hmm. you know we're. Not on a good path when it comes to that. Yeah, and it's just a lack of understanding by the people in power of what the normal, the average person has to do. Yeah. Uh, what the average person needs. Yeah. Um, 
you know, the, those people that are pushing these agendas are wealthy and will be untouched oh, essentially yeah. by any of this. Yeah. But as Liberty Larry was saying earlier, if you're just getting by and they're trying to eliminate hydrocarbon energy or they're trying to eliminate synthetic uh, fertilizers and, and pesticides and so forth, that it'll hit you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it, there's no way it can't. Yeah, <laughs> like it's just the ec, the economics are the laws of economics are the laws of economics. You can mm-hmm. try to weasel around them and and but at the end of the day, they're gonna catch up. Yeah, like, supply and demand mean something, and so do prices. Yeah, exactly. These things are these things are are they they control the market, whether the mm-hmm. people in charge want to believe that or not. Yeah, you know. Socialists have been trying to do this for for a long time, and it never works out. Yeah, There's strangely a, enough, it the, always ends in starvation and genocide. Exactly. And, yeah, nobody understands why, but that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> people yeah. understand why. There's yeah. plenty of people that understand why, but the people who are pushing it don't understand it or don't want to yeah. hear it. Well, they just... They just know that their way will work. Yeah, it, we're, it'll be different this time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's an arrogance there that... Um, while I can relate to, to some degree, yeah. uh, you know, my, my political position is like, I may know better than you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I can't impose my will on you. Yeah. And, and they don't have that. They don't have the second part. <laughs> yeah. They don't have that restriction on the, on the backside. Yeah. So. Exactly. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's all I've got for today. No. Oh, um, we were going to just like really, well, you know, we'll address that some other time. We're we, we're nearly an hour in anyway, so um, okay. well, well, I'd, I'd like to just kind of close as far as just with the climate change. One more thing I want to say because people, mm-hmm. anybody that's consumed a lot of news this week, you've probably seen the same thing I am. Is that this agenda is being pushed really hard, mm-hmm. um, and that's the reason I have wanted to talk about climate change stuff tonight is because people just need to understand that that there's an agenda here. And there's, there's a very, like, things aren't great now, and things can get a lot worse in a hurry if some of the stuff that, that's being talked about is, is put into place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I just want people to, to really just pay attention to what's being said and who's saying it. And look at Sri Lanka. And yeah, and look at the real time examples that we're seeing out there right now, mm-hmm. because that's, that's, a, that's a perfect one in Sri Lanka. Yeah. So. All right. Well, um, we are planning to be back next week. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, between now and then, you can do a lot of things. All right. You can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, and or YouTube. Yeah. Uh, you can like and share our content. Um, you can tell your friends and get them to listen and say, hey, you should know what was going on in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Listen to this episode. Exactly. Or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, um, spread the word. It really does help us. Uh, of course, um, comments and um, reviews and so forth, like reviews on iTunes and Podbean, comments on Facebook and Podbean also. I think yeah. you can do comments there too. Maybe. Anyway, um, like all that stuff helps us. So we really appreciate it. Absolutely. And, um, and, uh, as always, if you have, uh, suggestions or articles or topics or, um, arguments or whatever it happens to be, you can always contact me at Michael at the Liberty Mike. And we may talk about it on the podcast. And we may talk about it on the podcast. Yeah. Um, I hope that I, I satisfied the question. <laughs> to, to, I'm, I will find out soon, I'm sure. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, join us uh, again next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.